All right, so let's start to talk about, okay, now uh, we figured out what is the system. Now we want to actually, um, uh, we want to continue with our migration from which we've started from last time. So now we l l let's try to go ahead and just extract the data from the other system or from the legacy system, the old system. So it, every system is different. And usually the business, they know how to go to the tables and extract the data from uh, from their reports and so on and so forth. Now I'm going to show you an example, a real example about uh, a cost center extracted file. So this is the file. So now this is, is extracted from a legacy system. So we have a lot of data in here, and um, and and we want to actually upload it into our into our SAP. But first thing first, okay. So this is the this is the the file that we get it from the other system. For example, here's what the cost center number is. Here's the validity date from valid from valid two, and here's the name uh, for the cost center, and here's the description. And who's here? Who's the manager responsible for that cost center, uh, and so on and so forth. First thing first. Okay, let me just put this thing down. Okay, you extracted the data. You extracted you either usually in it usually we extract it usually is an Excel file if it's not too big of a data if it's like it's not millions of records or you extract it in a flat file like a C CSV file or a f flat file which is text file or you could actually extract it into an Access database. Okay, if it's huge in the amount of data. Okay, sometimes you actually extract it to a staging table. Okay. And we don't want to get there unless you're talking about millions of millions of records, which is a big gigantic project. Yes, where we need to go staging into a staging database table. Okay, after you extract the information, now we have to cleanse it. What do I mean by cleansing it? So let me just go back here to the file. Let's have to look at it. Meaning, is this field meeting the requirements of SAP? meaning uh, control and area. Is the control and area EXON1 is accepted field into SAP? First of all, we know by now, if you followed every single thing that we've done before, control and area is a configurable object. That means we have to configure it in the system. So you cannot even upload this file until you do some configuration into the system so you have to start by doing all the configuration and if you didn't know how to do it just review all of our previous lessons it'll show you how you actually might, might uh, configure the control area but anyways so first of all you need to go and look into okay is it meet is this field exist okay for example if it's a control and area if it's something configuration you need to make sure the configuration actually exists okay and uh, Let's go there to the system. Uh, let's go here. Let's go to the system. Uh, let me get the SAP. So you go to the table of SAP, table of control and area. If you didn't know the tables, just review our previous sessions. We will know everything about the table. So you go to the tables, which is TKA01, which is the master data table, which is, the, sorry, the, the control and area table. And here's what the control and area is. So it tells you the control and area is supposed to be four digits, not more than that. Okay, so four digits. List, now we have to go look into our data. We have to say here, okay, usually because you have so many records, you just open another thing and and you'll say, okay, true or false, okay, true or false. Okay, is this record within four digits? So you're gonna come here, this equals to four, okay, or sorry, you'll say here the length, the length of this field equals to four, digits and as you can see here it tells you true or false okay and let's assume now i know that i'm, I'm just trying to load now only one control and area but let's assume we have multiple different control and area i'm trying to actually upload let's say here this one is h a, -H -A n s as you can see it, it will become true so you have to build your own thing like a and true okay this is false and so on and so forth so the system is going to go like this trying to identify which one is true, which one is false. And usually we're gonna just come here and we filter and we look into our, only the false one, okay? And we try to fix them. We work with the business, we try to fix them. Sometimes the system, for example, in this specific example, this is a real example. This is Exxon One. Exxon One, this is exactly what is the control and area into the JD Edwards system. They don't call it control and area though. They control something, something else, but this is, Exxon One, this is the exact information that we pull from that system. So it's five digits. This is how the system actually works. It's different. While in SAP, as we've seen, it's four digits. 
Okay, as you can see here, a totally controlled area maximum length is four digits. So we have to configure something into the system. Okay, and we have to actually make sure we update our up upload file. So in this example, which we, what we did is, let me just start, take this out for now. I don't want to tap any filter. In this example, what we did is, we've created, we've cre I created for this task a control and area, which is AHM1. So I'm going to say here, AHM1 for all these existing cost center control and area. So now AHM1, and, and here we have true and false. That means it's accepted by the, by the system. Is accepted by the system. I just like I like to have it here true and false, and I usually, oops, usually whenever I actually do it in a practical sense, I just come here and I and I, I just say here, um, I just do conditional. Okay, I'm not sure what I'm trying to do here, but let me just create a new rule here. I'll set the color based on equals to. Okay, I'll say here if it's true just make it green okay make it green uh, I don't want to just fill it usually I just highlight it as green oh, okay I can just fill it with green no problem and I, I just I need to add another rule if it's for example okay come back here usually equals to I make another rule if it's false make it red usually this is how it works so for example if you come here let's say this one is a is a five digit something like that this is gonna be false this is how we usually do it. This is how we usually do it. But now I don't want to have any false, so I want to make sure that we're good here. And let's assume I have false here. And whenever we actually do the filtering, we come here and we'll see, okay, let me just, uh, we don't just filter by false or true. No, we don't care because sometimes we're going to have so many things. I just want to say, give me the false. Okay, just give me the false. Okay, the red one or something like that. Give me the, the, the pink or the red one. So it will only show you the one which is false. It doesn't show you anything else. So then the business has to work into this items and stuff. But for now, we want to actually fix our data and we want to move on. So, okay, this one is fine. Then you go to the next column. Okay, also the same thing. I'll just say here, true and false. Okay, I'll say here, true and false column. And I have to look into this one, cost center. So now we have to need to know, to know what is the requirements from an SAP perspective as far as uh, accepted cost center so we need to go to the system and we, we need to go to the table of the cost center so you go to SA11 which is the okay in case if you don't know how to go to the table it's very easy you go to SA11 and you just Google what is the cost center t uh, table in SAP and CSKS and you execute or you display and see what is the requirement here is the cost center cost center you have up to 10 character Okay, it's character. Character means anything, either number or digits. So up to 10 characters. Now, only what we're trying to do, we need to find out the rules for all these fields that we're trying to upload into the system. So you come here and same thing, you build just simple rule. Okay, for example, the length of this thing, oops, oh, let me come back here. You click equals and then you'll say the length of this field, okay, should, should be less than 10. Okay, so if it's less than 10, it's going to give you true. If it's more than 10, it's going to give you false. So let's say, for example, let's say when you uploaded data from the system, this file is already cleansed. I already have worked on it. So that's why you'll see here everything is true, true, true. And the same thing, I want to actually get the the, the conditions and everything just the same here. So I want to make, if it's true, it's going to be green. If it's false, it's going to give me something else. So for this one right now, we could come here. Let's say I don't have... I have something more than 10 characters. Let's say here, uh, something like more than 10 characters. If you see here, it'll become false, just like that. Okay, so th that's what our rules is. Our rules is just make sure this this field based on SAP. SAP technically accept stuff, accept values less than 10 characters. Here's the date. So we all know the date. So let me just come back here. Usually the date you have up to, okay, true and false. Okay, make sure that you have a per date. Usually if, Anyways, for cost center, we want to have something like an older date, so we can say, okay, it depends on the business, okay. But for now, we could check, okay. Usually, the date you have you have how many characters? You have one, two, which is for the for the month, and uh, uh, three, four for the day. Then uh, this is uh, four digits up to far. Now you have four digits for the for the year, which is eight. So you want to make sure that it's less than eight digits, okay. Some comp I mean. 
if you want to go even extreme you can even check the format if it's if it's uh, if it's date format or not but i'm not going to go into that extreme because usually i want to go make it simple i will just really look into my dates it has to be uh month day and year okay the first two digits is going to be the month the second two digits is going to be the the days and the last four digits is, is the year okay at least i'm trying to be simple here but for now i could just say here give me something all the stuff which is okay equals to eight characters if it's equals to eight characters that means it's good if it's not equals to eight character that means it's not good for now you could have actually multiple rules and make sure the format is right but now i'm trying to go with the format of sap like the simplest format okay if, if you're not familiar with this uh let me just come back here the standard format for the tables is going to be month month day day y y y y okay at least this is how i I configured my my system to be month month D D Y Y Y Y. Um, we'll, we'll talk into that one really in details because usually in uploading and, and migration, this is sometimes is an issue. And the same thing, you copy the same format, you copy the same logic. If it's true, it's green. If it's red, it's, it's going to be. Let's say here, for example, I want to just add something here. Okay, if I add something, it's going to be it's going to be false. Uh, if it's false, it's going to be red. And usually you just filter. You see only the red. Okay, you filter by color. You'll see only the one which is, does have the red. Then you work on them. Okay. I think you get the you got the logic. So the same thing. What about the description? Okay, the description. Same thing. You go to this to the table and you'll find what is the rules for the description. Okay. Uh, like for example, let's see where's the description. I'm not sure if I have description here. Oh, if 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 you have so many columns and you don't know which one is which, you just like just search for it. Maybe it does have different names. Description. Okay, I don't have description, but uh. Okay, person responsible, for example. Okay, uh, you can have it the same name uh, and so on and so forth. So, for example, person responsible, it has to be 20 character maximum. It shouldn't be more than that. User responsible should be 12 characters maximum and so on and so forth. So, you, you technically, it depends on what you're uploading. Every field matters. Every column matters. So, you need to make sure how SAP look at it as the right field. And you need to make sure you cleanse it. Cleanse it means you have to make it in the same format SAP would expect. Okay, once you finish all this stuff, you need to delete. Okay, you, now you make sure, okay, you've actually went through this exercise. Usually it takes some time to make sure, that, especially if it's two different systems, that means they have two different formats. Then you need to make sure that uh, you bring them up into the same, you, you adjust your upload file, the file that you've actually got it, you adjust it into the same format as people would expect and would respect. Okay, after you've done that, you've, you've saved it in different version, then you make sure you get ready for the upload. So you, you remove all the, the true files, you're cleansing stuff, you remove it. So you get ready for the, for the file upload. And yeah, I don't want to filter anything for now. Uh, oops. Okay, I don't want to filter anything for now. So yeah, just delete if there's anything here. I don't want to have anything unusual. Okay, so that's pretty much what you do in the cleansing. You cleanse the data means you have to bring the data into a format SAP would expect. So make sure that there's no surprises here. Um, you, you need to bring the data into a format SAP would expect. Either something has to be configured. Everything here, either configuration or master data. So, so for example, here it says, okay, if you, if you, this master data is a cost center. Let me just show you how a cost center would look like. Let me just go here. Okay, S03. Uh, I'm looking into control and area AHM1. I just want to show you how the master data looks like by itself. You have to know how master data looks like. This is how master data looks like. So as you can see here, here you have profit center, and this profit center should exist. For example, if this profit center that I'm actually having in my upload file doesn't exist, you're going to get an error message. You cannot create a, a cost center with a, a profit center that it doesn't exist. So we need to make sure this profit center exists into into our in, into our data. Talk to the IT, make sure it exists. And here's all the information. For example, the name, uh, the description, uh, and all this information has to be has to be filled in. Anyway, so in the next session, what you're going to be looking into, uh, we're going to look into how we're going to upload the data. So we extracted the data from the system, the legacy system, and we did the data cleansing. Okay, we made sure that the, the upload file is in the same format SAP would expect. Now, in the next session, we're going to talk about how we're going to upload it. How are we going to upload it? Is it are we going to just go one by one creating the cost centers? 
or we're going to use some of those tools, which I'm going to I'm going to show it to you in a in a few minutes. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I'll see you in the next session, and we'll talk about how we're going to upload uh, the master data into into SAP. Thank you.